Hi, my name is Aya, you're watching Aya Reads and I'm here to talk about the 15 books I really, really want to read in 2024. So these TBRs are obviously fun to do because these are the books I'm most excited about. These are books I really want to prioritize, but obviously throughout the year, things might change. I might end up changing my mind about them, but for now, these are ones I really want to make a concerted effort to really read them. Basically, this is going to be split up in four different categories. The first one is just straight up romances. The second one is historical romances I really want to read. Then there is not romances. And then there's the fourth one that's classics. Yeah, with classics, I am Dutch. I grew up in the Netherlands and like we only for English class, we had to read like a couple classics, but I think for school, I only read like three or four classics. So there's a bunch of classics that I know a lot of people love that I've never read. So I just wanna make a concerted effort to read a couple of those a year. I do have to say in 2023, I failed miserably with that task. So hopefully in 2024, I'll have better luck because the classics I have read, I did really enjoy. So I definitely wanna prioritize those this year as well. So let's start with the romances. The first one I really want to read is the Cloverly Farm series by Melanie Harlow. This is actually, I believe, the fifth one. I just bought them out of order, but I, I do have Irresistible, which is the first one on my Kindle, so I'll definitely read that. I'm, I already made plans to read this one. It's going to be in the first week of 2024, but I just, I want to read this entire series. Cloverly Farms has been very high up on my most recommended series because a lot of people on booktube really love this series and i think i will too the first book is a single dad nanny romance she's been very sheltered by her family because she's been pretty sick and now she wants to spread her wings and fall in love with uh, the single dad whose daughter she's nannying and i believe so you the first five follows these sisters and then there's also a next generation of i believe his daughters in the first book so yeah, plenty of books to read for me in 2024, but I definitely want to make a concerted effort to read these. And these, I'm pretty sure I'm going to fly through because they're very short. So it should be no problem to start this series first and foremost, but also to get a good way through or actually finish it in 2024 as well. And I do believe that with Melanie Harlow, a lot of books are interconnected with Cloverly Farm. So that is why I really want to read Melanie Harlow in 2024. And I think it's a good idea to start with the Cloverly Farm series. Next is the Mindfuck series by Esti Abbey. This one has been recommended so many times throughout the years. This is a five novella, so I should fly through them. Basically, you follow this serial killer named Lana, and it's her romance with the FBI agent that is on her case. And the reason that she's killing, I'm pretty sure, is because these were all people that have hurt her or actually like sexually assaulted her when she was younger. So it seems like a righteous cause. A lot of people really love this series and I'm pretty sure you'll fly through them because it's only five novellas. So yeah, I really want to make an effort to finally get to this book because I've been meaning to read it for years and I still haven't, even though it is a very easy series to start and finish. Now I'm reading the um, Holly Knight's novellas by Lee Ko. I'm pretty sure once I finish that novella series, I'm going to start the Mindfuck series. So very, very hyped about that. Next is Praise by Sarah Kate and like the whole series. Even though the first book has a trope that is not really my favorite, which is Ex-Boyfriend's Dad. I have just heard, been hearing so many good things about this series. I believe it's recently finished actually. So I just cannot wait to read it. It's basically follows this sex club. And the first book you follow this girl who recently broke up with her boyfriend and now she has to get like money from his dad and her dad or his dad thinks that she's his new sub so he makes her get on her knees and she doesn't know what's going on so she does until he realizes what a big mistake he's made so he actually hires her to be his actual secretary and then wrote like romantic feelings ensue like i said i've been hearing great things about it this series also has an mmf and an ffm which i'm very excited about those and the ex-boyfriend of her actually gets gets his own book too and it's actually with his best friend. So that is just a lot of tropes that I really love. And I haven't read a sex club book in a while. So very excited about this one. And then the last romance is Marriage for One by Ella Mays. So I really, really love the marriage of convenience trope. It is one of my favorites. It's such a good way to create forced proximity. And I always love the line of my wife. 
So that is bound to show up in those stories. And Marriage for One has been a Marriage of Convenience book that has been on my TBR for a while now. I have been intrigued about this book for a while. I believe the main characters are called Jack and Rose as well, which is obviously a nod to Titanic, which is one of my favorite movies. I could have put any Marriage of Convenience book in here, honestly, because I also have been interested in The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. I know a lot of people really love this, and I've been interested in Ella May's books for a while now, so if I really love this one, I can read her backlist as well. And I believe this is, like I said, Marriage of Convenience, this woman who wants, like I believe in her in inheritance, she gets this building, but in order to get it, she actually has to get married and then her lawyer volunteers for that task. So it sounds good and I'm really interested in it. Now for my historical romances, I have three to talk about. And this, these are not gonna be the only historical romances I read, but these ones are ones that I really wanna make a concerted effort to really get to them. The first one is actually The Ravenels by Lisa Kleypas. It's actually book three but I want to read all of them. The only reason I have this is because I fell in love with this cover and I really wanted the hardback of this one. Let's see, The Ravenels is the third book in this, or the third series in this consecutive series that she did. So you start with The Wallflowers, then you go to The Hathaways, and then The Ravenels. And I already read The Wallflowers and The Hathaways, so now it's time for The Ravenels. The Ravenels actually have some next generation stories from The Wallflowers, because this actually follows the son of the couple from Devil in Winter from The Wallflowers. Basically in the first book, you have this family who are this woman whose husband recently died, and she, she's only been married to him for a short while. And now his cousin, I think, takes over the estate and now she and her ex or her husband, late husband's sisters have to figure out what they're gonna do and then she falls in love with the cousin. And I believe every book follows one of those Ravenels, I think. But yeah, I, I, Lisa Kleypas has fast become one of my favorite authors and this is actually the last series that she wrote. I, I, she hasn't written anything. I believe since 2021 she hasn't written any book yet. So that is bittersweet, but I know she has an extensive backlist. So once I finish the Ravenels, I'm gonna dive into that backlist as well. But I'm very excited about it. And yeah, I believe I read The Wallflowers, most of them in 2022 and then the, um, the Hathaways in 2023 and 2024 is going to be the Ravenel's time. Next is Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase. So this is one of the almost classics, modern classics of historical romances, I feel like. A lot of people that have read this book really seem to love it. It follows like this rake character and like this feisty heroine. I believe the banter in here is great as well. I just... I don't really know what this book is about. All I know is that I've been hearing amazing things about this book for years. I also really, really love the cover too. Yeah, so basically, tough-minded Jessica Trent's sole intention is to free her nitwit brother from the destructive influence of Sebastian Ballister, the notorious Marcus of Dane. She never expects to desire the arrogant, immoral, amoral cad. And this sounds so good to me. Like, like I said, a lot of people that have read it really love it. It has a 4.09 average rating. And a lot of people that I follow really love it. And Indigo by Beverly Jenkins. I've been meaning to read a Beverly Jenkins for a while now. And this is her most popular book. It follows the Underground Railroad. This is going to be my first full-length historical romance that actually takes place in the US as opposed to the UK. Beverly Jenkins is a very popular historical romance author. And I, I really want to read her books. And I definitely am planning on reading more than just Indigo, but I definitely want to start with Indigo in 2024. So I'm very much looking forward to this one. Now for the not romances, I have four that are not classics. The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This has been on my TBR for years, maybe 10 years at this point. And I have owned this book for around that time as well. I actually started listening to it and I was so lost, so I stopped. Uh, but I still have not read this book yet. I do know that it's pretty con confusing and it is very intimidating to me, which is one of the reasons why I never actually read it. But hopefully in 2024, I will finally read this book because a lot of people that have read it do seem to love it. And I believe this follows magicians and the circus that only comes out at night, I'm pretty sure. I don't really need to know a whole lot about this book. I do have very high hopes that I'll love this book. Next is one that I actually started already. I actually got to page 247 before I stopped, which this book is very long. Let me see. It has over 700 pages. It's Empire of the Vampire. And I really want to read this book because the sequel uh, will come out in 2024. And what I read so far, I did definitely enjoy. It is very bleak and dark. I did find it very interesting until my book slump hit, so I stopped reading. This has beautiful illustrations 
as well. Let me see if I can show you. Basically, this follows a world where there's no light anymore. The vampires have taken over and now you follow this vampire hunter as he tells his story to this chronicler. And I really love those types of stories where you know that it's somebody actually telling his life story. And like I said, what I read so far, I did really enjoy. So I just need to buckle up and reread the, cha the chapters that I read already and then continue on with this book. Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. And really it's Brandon Sanderson in general. So far I've only read one Brandon Sanderson and it was the first book in his Mistborn trilogy. And I don't know what was up with me at that point, but I didn't love it as much as other people seem to. So I kind of stopped. But his books are very popular and I'm sure they're popular for a reason. And I really want to get into Brandon Sanderson's books. I really want to get into his Cosmere universe. And there's a bunch of books of his that have been very interesting to me. And one of them is definitely Warbreaker. And I feel like that is an easy way to for me to get into this book because I believe it has a strong romance plot line. And so far it's only a standalone. So I feel like this is one I'm definitely gonna enjoy. Basically this is about these two sisters. One of them has been trained to marry this king from a different kingdom and his father, her father at the last moment decides to send his other daughter who's not been trained. So she has to go now and, but the other sister goes after her and I believe there's this godlike character too. And this revolves around magic that centers breaths. It sounds interesting. I've been hearing good things about it and I feel, I feel like this is a type of fantasy that will ease me into the Brandon Sanderson books. And I really love him already because he's a very prolific author. I know that he comes out with books very frequently, which I love that. And then the last not romance that's also not a classic is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. Before 2023, there were two big World War II stories that I had not read yet that I had very high expectations for. And one of them was this one and the other one was The Nightingale. And The Nightingale was a little bit of a disappointment to me. I believe my expectations were set way too high. So this is gonna be the other one I'm gonna stake all my expectations for. I believe this recently also got turned into either a TV show or a movie. It's a World War II novel following a blind girl and a German soldier and it sounds good. I heard great things about it. And what I also already love about this book is that it has very short chapters, which I love that. That just makes me fly through books if the chapters are very short, especially with heavy books about a war. If the chapters are very short, it still makes me fly through those books. So very excited about this one. And now for the four classics that I really want to read. The first one is Jane Eyre. This has been on many, a many, a many a TBR. This book, I feel like I'm going to really love. It's a dark Gothic story. I know a lot of people really love it and I think I will love it too. But every time I put it on my TBR, I just never get around to it. So I really like you guys, please keep me accountable because I really want to read this so badly. I believe all of you already know what Jane Eyre is about, so I'm not gonna really spend a whole lot of time on it, but yeah, it's a romance and a dark romance at that, and I'm very excited about a governess too. Like, sign me up. I really, once I finish it, I've never watched the movie, but it has Michael Fassbender, who I think is so sexy. So once I finish this, maybe I'll watch the movie as well. Dracula by Bram Stoker. Once again, a classic that a lot of people have already read and loved, and I never have. I really want to read it. I know a lot of people love it. It's about vampires, obviously, and I love that genre. And I really want to read the books that have started it all. And Dracula obviously is one of them. The Picture of Dorian Gray. This is actually the shortest of them all, but this follows a guy who's very vain. And then one day he gets his portrait made. And I, I believe the portrait get, gets older, but he never does. I don't know, but it sounds good. And I know a lot of people really love it. So. Hopefully I will too. And then last, I'm not sure if this actually classifies as a classic, but maybe it's a children's classic and it's Watership Down about rabbits. And that is all I know. <laughs> I know it is a series though, which I'm not hyped about, but I don't know, this sounds good. It's very long though. It's the longest of all these books, but since it's, it's a children's classic, hopefully I'll fly through it. And I just realized I'm gonna really hold myself accountable because these are four classics and there's, 
I'm just gonna split them up in quarters. So the first quarter, I'll read one. I think I'm gonna just do it that way because then it's like a more man manageable task. But yeah, these are the 15 books that I really, really wanna read in 2024. Definitely let me know if you've read any of them and what your thoughts were. Do you think I should read them or do you think I should kick one of them off my TBR? Definitely leave me all your thoughts down below and I really would love to know what are the top three books that you really, really want to read in 2024? Leave all your thoughts down below. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know by leaving a like if you did. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.